Good morning, everyone. I'm going to give a couple minutes for everyone to get in here. Just hang out here for a minute. It's gotten pretty cold the last few days. But again, much like back where I'm from in Syracuse, we're not getting any snow. So, amen to that. I'm happy for that. <laughs> it doesn't feel very spring-like, though. It feels like the rain feels pretty spring-like, but it is just a tad too cold for my body to re recognize that it's spring. But I personally know that it's spring because my allergies are in full swing. <laughs> so when that happens, I know that it is spring or fall. That's how my body tells me it's spring or fall. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning, Rusty. Good morning, Marilyn. Good morning, everyone else that is joining. Thank you so much. Hope you guys are all having a good morning. Maybe having some breakfast or having some coffee or maybe just laying in bed relaxing. Those are all good things. Do all of those things. <laughs> morning, Mom. Morning, Ryan. Yeah, it's... It is, uh, it's just cold. Like the rain doesn't bother me, but cold rain, I don't know. It's very strange. I, I feel like I'd rather have snow. And I think ever, everyone in Pennsylvania is going to torch and pitchfork against my house when I say that. But I think I'd rather have snow if it's going to be this cold instead of a bunch of cold rain and thunderstorms. <laughs> but that's just me. I, I like the cold a little better than I like the hot, so... Morning, Bob. Oh, good morning, good morning. <clears throat> we'll get started here in like another minute. Give people a little bit more time to get in here. Oh, what's everyone have this morning? Tea, coffee, some water. I am not having coffee today because I feel pretty awake. I'm trying to not have coffee when I actually feel awake. I think it's easy to slip into like the oh morning cup of coffee, but you don't even you realize you don't even really need it. So I try to save it for my extra jolt um, when I actually need to be awake. <laughs> That's why you moved home from Michigan, yeah, yeah. Hmm. I bet Michigan has a little bit colder of a. Or a little bit crazier of a winter, I should say. I'm from New York, so we would get a lot of snow, that's for sure. But but the cold without snow is is different. I've been talking to some Syracuse friends, and it's like it's like 20 degrees colder there during the day than it is here. And we're only like four hours south. It's very crazy. Like, I don't think in my mind of Pennsylvania and New York to be that different. But when it comes to weather, they are. They very much are. I imagine the same as with Michigan. That's crazy, Rianne. Coffee? Mm. I love a hot cup of coffee. Okay. Well, thank you, everyone, for coming in and joining. I'm happy that you're here. I'm happy that you're spending some time with us this morning. Um, I'm going to do a short little reading, and I'm just going to give a little bit of, of a reflection on it, I think. Uh, we're going to be reading from John 21 this morning. John 21, verses 4 through 14. But before we do that, I'm just going to invite the Holy Spirit. So Holy Spirit, would you come this morning? Lord, would you just prepare our hearts to read Scripture in a new way this morning, to experience your word in an exciting way? Refresh us this morning, Lord, with community and with love. Fill us with peace and send us out. And I pray as we read this this morning, Lord, that as we look a little bit into what this means personally, that you would reveal that for us. Amen. Oh. All right, so we're going to be reading from John 21, 4 through 14. And I'm just going to read through it, and then we'll talk a little bit about it. So John 21, 
4 through 14. Early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples did not rec realize that this was Jesus. He called out to them, friends, haven't you any fish? No, they answered. He said, throw your net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. When they did, they were unable to haul in the net because of the large number of fish. Then the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, it is the Lord. As soon as Simon Peter heard him say, it is the Lord, he wrapped his outer garment around him, for he had taken it off, and jumped into the water. The other disciples followed in the boat, towing the net full of fish, for they were not that far from shore, about a hundred yards. When they landed, they saw a fire of burning coals there with fish on it and some bread. Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish you have just caught. So Simon Peter climbed back into the boat and dragged the net ashore. It was full of large fish, 153 to be exact. But even with so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. None of the disciples dared ask him, who are you? For they knew that it was the Lord. Jesus came, took the bread and gave it to them and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time that Jesus appeared to his disciples after he was raised from the dead. So we get a little bit of context right at the end there. Um, this is where this takes place in the story, you know. But this was the third time that Jesus had appeared to his group of disciples um, after he was raised from the dead. And that's probably, that's why, not even just probably, that's why that they were asking, who are you? Or rather, they dared to not ask, who are you? Because in the previous encounters, they they asked Jesus, who are you? And and he would tell them, and he they would say, they wouldn't believe him. They would say, no, who, who are you? Uh, and that's when he would question, you know, oh, you of little faith. <laughs> but they didn't, they dared not to ask this time. Um, and I think that this little part of this story here, Jesus appearing to them for the third time is, is amazing because it really points first to Peter, um, as if we look at like when they bring the boat ashore and Jesus is waiting there with, uh, the, the charcoal for the fish and the bread, uh, that is bringing Peter back to like the exact place that Jesus called him to follow him and called him out of his past life to to follow him on a journey and it almost brings this like full circle for Peter this like realization of Jesus being back right it's this it's this completion of a story by going back to the start and I think that it's incredible. And and we talk about like the ultimate creator, God. I mean, that's a beautiful story, right? Like you can't, you can't write a better story. Um, and I think another thing that we tend to forget uh, when we're reading the Bible is a couple things really, but, but uh, description uh, is in the Bible. Emphasis is in the Bible to be powerful and effective. And what I mean by that is like, when they go into detail in the Bible about something, it's for a purpose. They don't just write out, you know, God's word doesn't just emphasize or give detail to something for no purpose. It's almost always to draw purpose to something and attention to something. And and the fishing, um, just as a profession or as an action in this time, was incredibly hard. It was it was hard work. It was a battle with fish, right? They made it look easy in this. You tossed the net out. Oh, you got the biggest haul you've ever seen. You reeled it in, you brought it to shore. But I'm sure that that took a lot longer than what we're reading and that it was very painstaking and difficult. But even after all of that, and even after dragging the fish onto the shore, uh, Jesus was waiting with fish cooking to eat breakfast with them, to commune with them. And one of the things that I feel like I got most out of this that I want to share with you guys this morning, and I hope that this kind of leads us into a reflective space as we start our day, is they put so much emphasis on the number of fish and how large the fish were and how full the net was of fish, but the net didn't break. And again, I think details are put in into these stories because they're meant to draw our attention to them. I mean, the, it, it sounds to me like the net should have broken, right? Uh, when you read this, it's pretty clear that like, whoa, this net should have broken. 
why isn't it broken? There are so many fish. They're so big fish. Um, it was jammed. But this kind of is like a retelling almost of a different parable that we saw uh, of the three times, I think, in the Bible of the new wine and the old wineskins, which if you've read through it, uh, you, you know that that parable is told a few times. And I think that these things are all pointing to the same thing. And that is there is a heavy importance that Jesus tells us uh, through these stories, through the description of these stories, there's an importance on keeping the container of our lives in good condition. Um, you know, the net did not break. Why did the net not break? Because it was strong, <laughs> right? Like there's not a secret. There's not a secret. Uh, it was a strong net. It was prepared for that. Uh, the wineskins, right? The old wineskin, it, it could have ripped. Some of them didn't. It was the container of our lives being in good condition is going to help keep the things in that God is doing and not, and help us to not explode out, right? Like, like 153 large fish. Um, so I just want to ask as we start the day, um, I don't want to try and define this for anybody. I think that it's good that we kind of think about this for ourselves, but what does it look like for me or for you, um, to keep the container of your life in good condition? And I don't think that this just means our physical body, right? I think that this encompasses all things separately. This is our spiritual self, our emotional life, our relational life. Maybe as we start today and as we go out to whatever we're doing, we can take a moment and think, what can I be doing to keep my container um, of my life in good condition? And maybe for some of us, that's, well, I need to, like, it's more literal. Maybe it's, I need to, I, I really want to go and get back to working out. Or maybe it's, I really got to reconnect with my friends and, and make sure that my relational health is is what it should be. Because we all know that that can very much contribute to to our condition, right? And our souls. Um, maybe it's emotional. I know one thing for me lately, I've been reading a lot more and that is something that I feel is actually adding to the condition of my container of my life. And I just think that as we start this day, if you can think of something to just focus in on um, that you want, don't think of this as I need to do this and shame yourself, but think of it rather as how can I prepare myself uh, f to not spill open, right? How can I strengthen my net? So that's kind of my uh, my action call, I think. I just want to see. Um, I mean, I would love to see if anyone has any insights later in the day. You can feel free to come back and comment on this video. I would love to read. I will read them. I would love to read them if you want to share. Um, but more so just for yourself to hone in and pray with God and, and see what it is that uh, he's calling you to kind of strengthen about your container of your life. So I'm going to pray, and then we'll be on our way. So Holy Spirit, come. Lord, I pray that you would speak to each and every one of us this morning, that we would hear you clearly, whether we're driving to work, or walking and sitting in the other room. Whether we're alone or whether we're with the entire family, Lord, I pray that we would hear your voice clearly this morning. God, I pray for opportunity for us to understand what it is that you're calling into us to strengthen our container, Lord, to, to help prepare ourselves to do your work. And God, give us the strength to lean into that thing that you're asking us to improve or to grow in. I pray that if, if there's anyone here that is thinking that they need to improve relationally with friends or with trust, I pray that you would give them the strength to do that because that is hard. Hmm. 
Lord, prepare us for the day. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you guys for joining. Um, look forward to seeing you tomorrow morning, morning reflection at 8.30, and then also on service at 7, or 7, Sunday. Wow, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> at service on Sunday, at 10 a.m., rather. Um, but yeah, like I said, feel free to comment on the video after if you want to share anything. I would love to read it and connect with you. So amen, and you guys have a wonderful day. Bye.